Hey everyone, this is Tori and I'm here with Morgan of Rose Blush. Today we're going to be chatting about her new album, Wide Margins, which is something that you described as an indie synth rock collaboration with eight different female vocalists. Um, and it's meant to bring attention to the discrimination and the silencing of women. Um, and I just want to start this off by saying, obviously we've been talking for a minute for this, but yeah. like this album idea and presentation is definitely like very apt to this current atmosphere, especially within the rock and alternative scene. Um, you know, so many people are coming out and talking about the types of like injustices that have, that have been committed upon them, especially against other men within the music scene. Yeah, you know, just this past week, actually, Haley Williams posted something about that. Um, and it's interesting because this concept is something I've been thinking of for a while. And mm -hmm. it's something that I've been really passionate about, I think, ever since I became a musician and started playing in bands. Because let me tell you, like, as a female musician, I can't say a single other female musician that I've met in my whole life um, that wasn't like a front woman vocalist. It's mm -hmm. like there are not a lot of women in music. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it, it's also been the same, you know, for me as a, you know, as, as a new musician. Now, let me, let me go back. So you started, when did you start playing music? I know you were in a band before this current project that you're doing. Yeah, my last, my really only like major band that I've been in was called Cash Sellout. Okay. Um, and we met through my university and we played together all last school year. Um, awesome. Yes, that was really fun. But I, I guess, started playing music in fourth grade because I okay. joined yeah, like school orchestra. Do you play all the Yeah, things? I play a lot of stuff. Not very well, but I play a lot of stuff. Um, it's just important to play enough to get it recorded. Yeah. Song, so. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, technically, I started on violin, but I barely play violin anymore. Technically, mm. I still know how. I played in school orchestra all since fourth grade. And then um, I think it was in, like, middle school. I started taking guitar and piano lessons. I did that for, like, two years. And then I started joining bands and taught mm. myself a bunch of other stuff. That's awesome. And I really commend you for, like, sticking with it. Like, I couldn't tell you how many lessons I've started <laughs> and have not finished. <laughs> so. Oh, well, actually, when I was little, my mom made me do piano lessons. And I absolutely hated it. Because it was like me and this really old guy trying to teach me only classical music right. in this like really dark, stuffy room. I just absolutely hated it. I think I quit after like three months. Obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, but then it was actually my orchestra teacher in seventh grade who put down a Katy Perry song in front of us. Yeah. And for the first time in my life, I was like, this is awesome. Like playing pop music, that's where it's at. That's why I've been missing. Um, nice. Yeah, so I found places that did lessons that focused on popular music, and that's why I really got into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. That's definitely a very important thing. And I think, um, you know, people who are teaching music to younger people will do well to, like, take that advice. Like, as Yeah, because, like, it's always been very, basics. yeah, very classical focused. Yeah, and that's just, like... Like, whereas I could find uh, appreciation for that stuff, you know, as I'm old, as I get older, but mm -hmm. when I was younger, that was the last thing I cared about. I just want to like, I don't know if I was like a kid, I just want to like learn Hannah Montana songs. I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, it makes you a better musician, definitely. But I can't say that I was passionate about music until I started playing stuff that was not classical music. Mm, that's awesome. So when you were saying that you kind of had the idea about this album, so it sounds like to me that you kind of thought about the idea of the album before you started writing the songs or kind of how did that work? I know that's very weird because I was thinking about your question last night and talking to my girlfriend. And when I was writing this music, I didn't even have a plan to make this into an album. I've never successfully written a song all the way through before or even mm. tried to record a song. Um, and so I didn't think this was going to become anything. 
But then my girlfriend was like, you've actually been talking about this stuff for years, about how there's no women in music. And um, so I guess in a way, the concept came before it. And if I made an album, it was always going to have this concept in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it, it's kind of circular. Like it's not very clear cut, like, yeah, no, it really isn't. It, yeah. <laughs> it's just, okay, I see. Awesome. So when did you start work on this? Because um, when I was listening to the songs, you know, I that one song that you had on there called Not Done Yet. Yeah. Um, it's extremely current and relevant. So Right. This whole album is very current. I yes. started writing this because I was kind of very alone. Um, my roommate had left and all my friends had left Harrisonburg because the school kind of went online and everything mm-hmm. shut down here. So as someone with mental illness, that's really hard on depression, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. And so I was really struggling with that. And it was in like mid-May when all of that was going down. And my girlfriend was like, why don't you try writing music again? So that's when all of this started. I see. Wow. Well, that's really impressive because like you got a lot done in a very short amount of time. Yeah. I was like, I mean, I've never done this before. So I've been like Googling like timelines of when to promote in different ways and when to distribute the music and all that stuff. And most of it's like, it can take a year to make an album. I literally wrote all the music for this album in two weeks. Oh my gosh. That's (laughs) very impressive. Wow. (laughs) It was literally all I did for two weeks. I would get up and just write usually like a lead guitar part and then the rest of the song would shape itself around that. Um, But for two weeks, it's all I did. That is, that, that, that is very cool. So did you, um, end up, so you did the preliminary mixing or did you do all the mixing and mastering? I say that I did the preliminary mixing because I'm not totally sure what to call it. I did the arrangement of the tracks and everything. Mm -hmm. And I like put in the vocals and did like all the arrangement essentially. And I mixed, I would say the guitars and bass and drums, but then I've never really worked with vocals. So Mm -hmm. Zach Lipschultz, my friend did mixing on the vocals and then he mastered the tracks. I see. Yeah. The way the vocals sit within the tracks is so fantastic and it really like brings together all the songs even yeah he did an amazing job yeah Yeah, that's that's super cool I'm Um, so happy I chose him to work with me on it because I agree like it was a very hard project to take on with having so many different vocalists mm -hmm. um and some of them didn't even have like good equipment to record on and he made it sound pretty much for the most part all like I would say pretty professional. So it's very yeah. impressive. It has a very like, uh, I, I can't think of the sound, but like when you, when I listened to that one song, um, Summertime, Summer Days. Summer, summer Days, days. yeah. Um, like this whole album reminds me of summer. So like when, you know, it said it's coming out next week, like yeah. so well-timed. The whole thing is well-timed. It's it, like, well, the whole thing, like, good. There's a lot of thought that went into every single part of this album, even though it was written very fast. Like, this was supposed to be, in a way, documentation of the experience, I think our collective experience this summer with coronavirus, with Black Lives Matter gaining traction, Mm -hmm. um, with just everything, with, like, the social and political climate right now. So it was very much, it was meant to have that feel to it. Yeah, and it absolutely comes across that is like that is that is so impressive I can't I can't honestly say enough like now hearing actually how quick the timeline was like my mind is blown it's it's thank you yeah um so you mentioned some of your um, vocalists not having like great equipment to record on so like how did the collaboration work it sounds to me like you wrote all the music before or like how 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 did you guys do that yeah for the most part I had finished songs that were just instrumental songs um I sent them to all these vocalists and I let them do literally whatever they wanted with it and for some of them it became apparent that they didn't have great recording equipment there was like background noise and Mm -hmm. 
um, just different stuff like that. But Zach and I eventually worked together to mix all of that out. So it worked out in the end. So how did you find your vocalists? They all are people who I've worked with in the past in some way. Okay. Yeah. So let me get the list up here. Addison Grace is actually, she, I have not worked with her before, but we're starting a band based off what we did together with this Ooh, album. That's exciting. Yeah. So she's like the newest person. Okay, Everyone awesome. else I've been in a band with pretty much in some way. I see. Okay. That's super cool. Yeah. And I definitely like to get um, all their information when I write the blog post on that. I'd like to get, I'd like to write that. This is mostly just a note for myself, but I'd like to put that in the blog post as well. Um, yeah, definitely. I know yeah. they should like, it would be hard to coordinate having all of them in on this um, oh, video absolutely. chat, but they definitely would have more to say as far as the lyrics go. Yeah, so, yeah. and I'd love to catch up with um, them at some point. We could even maybe do um, a post about each song because there's so much in each song. And, you know, like I mentioned, I'm an English major, so words are so important to me. I could oh, that's write. awesome. Yeah. Ugh, I could write so much about each song. So I would love to um, do that with them. So if you could connect me with them, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I can definitely give you all their contact info. I'll tell you some of them are better at responding than okay. others. <laughs> but I mean, it yeah, we all have a lot going on. I get it. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Now, so you said you kind of let the vocalists do whatever they want with the lyrics. Yeah, and I actually, because you were saying how cohesive this all sounds, and yes. it's interesting because I gave them pretty much no guidance whatsoever. I said, this is me trying to provide a platform for female voices to be heard. And I said, I want it to be your stories. Like, I don't want to influence this. It was a very purposeful choice for me to, like, take a back seat in the lyric mm -hmm. writing process. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I literally let them do whatever they want for a couple songs. Different vocalists had like different versions of the lyrics. I was like, I like this one better. I see. Um, but that was pretty much it. Yeah, that's that's really cool and kind of a thing that I, you know, I, I wonder how that connects with you know whatever energy we're all experiencing right now like that's exactly what i was thinking yeah because yeah, this did end up being a very cohesive album i think in a lot of ways and Absolutely. so i think that really speaks to how women have been experiencing sort of these same struggles yeah absolutely um and i had you know made this note when i when i sent it to you about like this idea of women working together to create something is mm -hmm actually not something you see a lot you it's know, very true yeah when you look at um you know music you always see how girl bands can't last and um, yeah they're all fighting each other and they're all being divas and whatnot but this idea of like you know nearly a you know nearly 10 women you know it was eight but or nine it was, it was you. well nine, yeah, nine of us. Yeah, so all you know, not nine of you working together to create something so cohesive. That's not something you see in the music world, which is crazy. yeah. You know, I hadn't like considered it before you said that, but I think that's very true. I've even like kind of experienced that firsthand, where I felt like competitive with another female artist. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's very true, and I think like society sets it up to be that way, right? Like maybe yeah, constantly compared to each other you know you're always you know thinking about the like if you're looking at destiny's child you know yeah how they're finding each other like the pussycat dolls like it was always nicole versus um what was her name melody Crazy. i think so yeah um so yeah yeah that was definitely the point that i was trying to make i don't know if it got across but um that definitely was very poignant and very notable in this atmosphere to me, um, the idea that you all work together and it became so cohesive. Um, yeah, I think that's something to be said for the current political climate with people finally starting to, I think, come together and stand up for these different injustices. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you could definitely feel that, you know, even just gen in general going on social media and just kind of seeing 
how people are coming together. You know, we don't see as much coverage on the protests and the work that people are doing, you know, off of social media, but um, you can feel the like energy of everybody coming together, you know? Yeah, definitely. That's actually um, one of the songs kind of comments on that. So I guess I can go into it now. There's so yeah. many levels of like analysis and reinterpretation going on within this album. Mm -hmm. um, because the lyricists, I essentially told to interpret my instrumental parts. Yes. But then in turn, when they sent it back to me, I interpreted their individual stories into kind of a cohesive message. Yes. And there's sort of like multiple levels going on within that. So like we have um, going off of like mainly perennials, we have sort of like a historic viewpoint of oppression against women. Yes. Um, but we also have, like, more the viewpoint of going off of, like, current injustice going on with Black Lives Matter and all of that. And that song ends with the lyric, not done yet, we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the album as a whole, I think I finally sent you the track list, which is actually yes. really important, the order of the songs. Yes. Um, I did that very purposefully, because after not done yet, like, throws in your faces all this punk rock music mm -hmm. and saying, like, summer is not over yet like we have more to say so yeah i see yeah absolutely and i cannot wait to get more into that on the um album review post that's gonna be so fantastic yeah the I track list was very important yeah yeah i might have some more questions for you after that but um yeah that's so great um so like the idea first of all that you came up with this in Less than two months? Yeah, it was, um, it'll be less than three months, definitely. Like two and a half months from start to finish. Yeah, that's, that's so crazy. So, you know, I think that really shows your, like, prowess as a musician. And I think everybody should be excited what you're going to do next. <laughs> Thank you. I want yeah. you to be able to, like, bask in this because I hate it when people ask me, like, after I you know, complete this amazing feat, um, you know, what's next. But, you know, I definitely want whoever's listening to this to know, um, just to follow you, just to see what you're going to do. So what are your future plans in terms of music after, you know, after this album? Yeah, you know, things for me and music opportunities come up that I never expect. And so honestly, I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm going to do next. I plan to continue having um, a sort of like separate profile for myself as a musician under the name Rose Blush and mm -hmm. maybe publishing stuff under that. We'll see. I am starting a band with the people who worked on this album, some of them. It's uh, me on lead guitar, Addison Grace on lead vocals, Hannah Ripley on bass, and then Zach Lipschultz on synthesizer. Awesome. So we'll be starring a band. I don't fully know like the name of that or what direction I'll take, but mm -hmm. I'll probably be promoting it through Rose Blush. So. Absolutely. Well, everybody stay posted on that because I'm definitely yeah. going to be, to be honest. <laughs> Thank um, you. Because yeah. when, you know, when I started this project, I, you know, I, I assumed that I would hear a lot of different kinds of music and, you know, but I'm so glad that this is my first one. Because when I listen to your music, I don't know if you saw my comments on the Dropbox stuff. I did, yeah. <laughs> it really resonated. Like, this is exactly what, like, this is this, this is exactly the kind of stuff I like. Like, this is awesome. Um, so That's I, awesome. I, I was very fortuitous when I went on your website and read about, like, your history and the history of your band and everything. We have a lot of the same influences, actually. So I thought it was very... Why. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's that's so awesome. And I'm I'm super excited for it to come out. Downloaded Apple Music since that's my main uh Yeah, me main too. Course, but yeah. So I just want to thank you for talking with me today and you know just I don't know. This this has been so great and I'm so excited to do more of these. And if you ever have any other releases or anything, like I'm happy to to, you know do this again like it's, yeah it's great. and yeah also, that would be awesome yeah. yeah I also feel like you know we had a great conversation before this and you know I think that 
it's really important, especially um, as local musicians. I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. Um, but like the original music scene in Nova like needs more attention. It really does. I agree. I mean, I'm more in tune with the Harrisonburg music scene now. Right. Um, and we have a pretty strong underground music scene here. I mean, I met all these musicians through it. And also mm-hmm. the university, I think, contributes a lot. Absolutely. Actually met and sort of what contributed to the concept of this album was me working with a couple of these other vocalists on a musical theater production called Vinegar oh. Tom. Wow. Yeah, it's Vinegar Tom by Carol Churchill, and it's all about the Salem witch trials. And yeah, it's sort I think of, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, like reframes it through the lens of the woman and shows how really it was just um, the medicalization, I guess, of women defying social norms. And that's what yes. led to them being viewed as crazy and then witches. Hmm. That's so cool. Wait, so when, when did you do that project? I did that this past October. Oh, okay. Is there like any recordings or anything like that online? I'm not sure if they're online, but I actually do have recordings. We, there was like an onstage band and I played bass in that band. Oh, um, that's so cool. And it was very cool because it was an all-female cast. They recast the male characters. They cast them all as female Yes. Um, and I had never been in theater before, but it was really amazing. It was an amazing experience, like how close I got with all those women. Um, and it really like reinvigorated my passion for bringing women to the forefront of music. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, I honestly can't, like I, I, like I said, I can't wait for this album to come out. I can't wait for live music to open back up. <laughs> yeah, <Honestly>. really. <laughs> Um, but no, this has been a really great conversation. Um, yeah, thank you so much for uh, doing this project. And I mean, it's really great for me. I this is the first like promotional thing I've done with this album, so I'm so feel? thankful. It's very cool to be able to promote the album through another platform. So yeah, and and like that that's that's definitely my my goal with this is just you know, especially in this current atmosphere, like you know, we we can't meet in person really yeah and i thought that was very cool of you to do i think this will connect a lot of musicians that otherwise wouldn't have been connected so i think that's very cool Mm -hmm. absolutely um well i'm gonna end the i'm gonna end the interview here